Hello and welcome to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes Grand Arena Championships Season 30, Week 1, Round 1. My name is Boma Fett. Last season, I did really well. I finished at 7 and 2, and those two losses were both matches I could have won had I played better. So the question is, can I continue that this season? And the answer is likely no. Why? Because we're back to 3v3. And 3v3 magnifies the issue of uneven matchups. Having fewer Galactic Legends really, really hurts in 3v3. Having fewer Relic Levels really, really hurts in 3v3. And now with Datacrons thrown in, that's going to be more true than ever. Now I've looked at my bracket, and I am heavily outmatched by almost everyone. There's one other person in the bracket who has only two Galactic Legends, but they have more than double the number of total Relic Levels. So let's take a look at who my opponent is this round. Dante. Now I faced a Dante back in Season 25, however the ally codes are different, so this is a different account. Let's go to the Hotbot for a quick comparison. Alright, so the Hotbot shows about an even amount of green on my side as red on Dante's side, but Dante has the red in really important areas. So let's zoom in and take a closer look. This top section shows that Dante is a really good GAC player. In the old system, we have a best score of 59,000. That is much higher than my best score of 56,000. Overall lifetime banners over 900,000 is very, very good. Dante's offensive wins, defense, and clears are all very good, and undersized are way higher than mine. So this is an efficiency player. Dante's overall GP is about three quarters of a million more than mine, but the top 80 is closer to 100,000 more than mine. Dante has 24 more Zetas applied. I have a touch more speed at the top of my roster, but it's a very small advantage. Dante has 21 more Gear 13 characters. I have a few more Gear 12 and Gear 11 and above. I have 30 more six stop mods, and I do have more mods with high speed secondaries particularly at the higher speeds, 25 plus, 20 to 24. But when you get down to the 15 to 19 and 10 to 14, Dante actually has an advantage at those speeds. As I said earlier, my opponents are all going to have a large relic advantage over me, 464 to 324. So that's 140 total relic levels, and that is the smallest advantage any of my potential opponents could have this week. Dante has four Galactic Legends to my two, and Dante also has Starkiller. The key character sections look very similar, except we have a Relic 9 on Piet, that will make his executor faster, and we have a Gear 9 on Echo, although Bad Batch is very usable when undergeared. And in the important ships here, you can see because of that Relic 9 on Piet, he does have the faster Executor. So let's go back to the game and take a look at the board. Okay, let's take a look at my defense first. In the top zone, I've got Treya Trio, Darth Maul, Beskar Mando, Poggle with the Battle Droids, and Fin Fin Poe. In the bottom zone, I've got both Gas and Shock T with clones, Qui-Gon Jinn, Sortie with Chupio and 3PO. This is in place of CLS with 3PO and Chupio. Now my Sortie is very undergeared, so I don't know how well this is going to perform, but I think looking forward, this might be what I do, and that saves me CLS to use on offense with some Rebels. And then Darth Revan with Bastila Fallen and Talon, and that allows me to use Malik somewhere else. In the back zone, I've got Hux First Order, Savage with Malik, Newt Gunray, Night Sister Cheese, and Dash Rendar. Let's take a look at Dante's defense. We've got Darth Maul. 
Grievous, Newt Gunray with Nest, Phasma, and Shock Clones. And in the bottom zone, we've got Dash, CLS, Night Sisters, Bosk, and SLKR. Now, according to GAC history, SLKR is usually the only GL that they put on defense in 3v3. So I am not expecting a GL in the back zone, but I am expecting good squads back there. So we're going to start on the bottom here against SLKR. And I'm kind of going to overkill this with Jedi Master Kenobi, with Commander Ahsoka, and General Kenobi. I'm going to go with this Datacron because it's specifically for Galactic Republic, and I can use the other two Datacrons with other Jedi squads. All right, I'm going to go after Hux first. And we'll go ahead and take out the Stormtrooper. We'll give the Shien to Kenobi. General Kenobi taking a pounding there, that's good. Batter up. Big hit. And ultimate. Almost got him. There we go. 67. Against the Night Sisters, I'm going to go Crew Fox and Watt. My first order executioner is only Relic 2, so I can't put a Datacron here. So stupid. Put the tank tech onto crew and the weapons tech onto executioner. And should we go Talia first or Asajj first? Maybe Talia first. Uh, we'll go ahead and let's stun Asajj. Oh, and Talia just cleared the stun. I should have known that was coming. Goodbye, Talia. You can't bring her back, Daka. Clear that stun off of the Executioner. And goodbye, Asajj. Stun Daka. This is such a good counter. I know a lot of people don't like to use Watt here. 57. All right, Dash is scary, but he doesn't have a great squad with him. CLS, 3PO, and Chupio, this can be a problem squad. So I am going to run Jedi Knight Luke.
Hermit Yoda and Old Ben. Both of these Jedi Datacrons have a lot of resistance penetration, which is great for characters that do special damage, which would be Jedi Knight Revan, Bastila, Grandmaster Yoda. But for the guys that I have, I just want armor penetration, although I don't have a level six ability here. Okay, we're gonna go after Chupio first. Stun them. Knock down turn meter. Almost got Chupio. Go ahead and taunt. Okay, there we go. Ooh, big hit there. I wonder if I should try and... Oh, there's no way to do it. I was going to say, I wonder if I should try and recover banners here. Okay, 56 is not bad. Just lost one banner. All right, I'd really love to use Wedge, Han, and Chewie against both of these squads, but I'm going to go against Bosk. Even though I think it's the lesser of the two squads, because of the Zam Omicron, it's a lot faster. And we're going to go a little extra protection here. Okay, normally I like to boss... I like to stun boss to keep him from taunting, but I'm going to go right after Zam and get rid of that Omicron if I can. Uh, we'll do this, and then this should get rid of Zam. There we go. Okay, got through him quickly enough. Ooh, big hit there on Wedge. Fifty-six. Against Dash, I'm going to go Jedi Knight Revan. And here's where I will use one of these Datacrons with resistance penetration. I'm going to go straight after Dash. Goodbye, Dash. Let's cleanse. Spread Foresight. We'll call Yoda here. I lost a couple banners. Yeah, 54, not good. Had that battle dragged out longer, I could have recovered banners because of Jedi Revan's leadership. When you call assists, you recover protection, but I just didn't have time to call enough assists. Let's see what's in the back. Rolo, Qui-Gon... Geos, Poggle, and Mothma. We'll go against Qui-Gon here. With Jedi Master Luke. Okay, so I could take another Jedi with him. But if I do, then I can't use the last Datacron and get full benefit out of it. Because I won't have another squad that has all Relic 5s.
Okay, the Omicron is not active. Um, this is going to miss because of the foresight, but it should give me repost. Okay. Thought repost meant I was supposed to counterattack, but maybe not. Do that there. Almost gotten through Anakin. There we go. Fifty eight. I'm going to come back to this zone. Against Grievous, we're going to take Wampa. We can give him a Datacron. I like to give him extra potency so that he can land his debuffs. This Datacron gets him up over 90% potency. Smash. Keep roaring. Get protection back. Again, smash again. And this should do it. Fifty-eight. Against Phasma, I'm going to take the Bad Batch. Now with the Omicron on the TIE Pilot, I think they're going to go first, but I'm gambling that that won't matter. Okay, that mattered. That mattered a lot. That is terrible. This is going to miss because of the foresight, right? Yep. Okay. So I misunderestimated them. All right, so let's go back in there with Grievous. up let's get rid of that foresight So terrible banners there, 33. Against Shock T. I'm going to go with my bounty hunters here. My boss and Grief are both faster than his Shock T. 
So I'm hoping that I can get the contract before she gets a turn. Okay, roar. Oh, by having the boss bleed here, I have to hit somebody other than Shock. That's a little annoying. I really wanted to stun Shock T. Whoa, how did she get a turn? There must have been some sort of a turn meter gain mechanic there that I forgot about. Okay, we have contract. Let's get rid of her. Roar again. Go after him. You know, I'm so used to playing with the Aura Sing lead where you can hit anybody you want that I just forgot that Bosk's lead, you have to attack the weakest opponent. So that was, that was a dumb mistake on my part. Let's see if we can stun Echo. Now let's get rid of this guy over here. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should delete him. Uh, we've got him stunned, so let's go ahead and delete this guy. I'd like to get around to another heal if possible. Well, it's two turns away, probably not. Alright, well, that was a miscalculation as well. Oh, 57! We got back the banners. Okay, against Newt. We're going to go with Bastila here. With Ezra and Kanan. Give them some health, steal, and protection. This would definitely be scarier if Nest was a uh, relic. I'm actually going to try and stun Django. He's the biggest offensive threat there. What do these do? Physical damage and taunt. Give the buffs to Ezra. I'm gonna do a big hit here against Ness. Haha! -ha. Okay, let's do this. Go ahead and pay the extortion. I'm gonna call Kane in here. Stay off the extortion again. Big hit. That's one. Give these to Ezra again. Call Basti. 57 banners. They never got through the bonus protection. Okay, so against this Darth Maul squad, I have some ideas, but I'm going to come back to it. Okay, against Mon Mothma, I usually do Iden Troopers. 
but I've got my regular troopers available, so I'm going to do them instead. Veers, Piet, and Dark. Uh, we're going to go after Hoth Rebel Scout first. There we go. More punch, punch. One more. Give me one more. There we go. 57. Against Rolo, I'm going to go with a Nest Solo. And I'm going with extra tenacity on the Datacron. Even with the extra tenacity, Nest still got some debuffs on her. 58. Against the Geonosians, I always talk about splitting up Palpatine and Vader, but then there's never any need to. I always end up with more squads available than I need. So I guess that means I should be playing a tougher defense. Force Crush. Merciless. Goodbye, Spy. May get hit back here. Nope. Another Force Crush. See if we can get a stun. Nice. Get a stun. And 57. Against Poggle. We're gonna go with these bounty hunters and hope that we can get out Droidica before Droidica can terminate one of my guys. So we'll go ability block. Roll out the thermals. Roll out more thermals. We'll pop some thermals. Goodbye, Droidica. I kind of want to let the thermals explode because that helps my guys recover health and protection. Okay, so Darth Maul, I saved CLS for offense, so I really want to use him, but I'm not sure it's the smartest idea. I've got a Padme squad available. That's probably the better idea. Maybe something like that.
Okay. Um, let's see if we can stun him. Nope. Even with tenacity down, we didn't get the stun. Like, are you kidding me? Ooh, he hits hard. Stop it. Stop it. Yikes. Okay, so this was definitely a bad idea. There we go. Gonna lose R2. Okay, goodbye. Dooku's a much better character than I give him credit for most of the time. I mean, look at this. He's going to solo my two characters. That's just stupid. That is just stupid. Fifty banners, yuck. Definitely should have gone with a different squad there. That was just me being stubborn because I kept CLS for offense, so I felt like I had to use him. Executor, Hux, and Holdo. Okay, against the exec, I'm going to do the two shot. And for my burner ships, I'm putting in Rex. Because I don't think I'll need him with my negotiator fleet. And hopefully, he can withstand a few hits so I can get through all of the specials that I need to get through. There's one, there's two, there's three, okay, now I'm just going to let it time out. Okay, so here we go with our home one fleet. Yes, I am going to take in all the reinforcements this time. Ooh, stay alive, please. Okay, no AoEs. We just want to go after Xanadu. Single attacks only. There we go. Okay, do we want to do this disruptor yet? I don't think so. I think we want more, more ships on the field. Now we can AOE. gonna hit the uh, houndstooth there okay we bring in ghost or phantom rather let's hit this guy mm, 
looks like the executor's gonna go soon. So let's just do a basic. Keep the wiggle going. Let's get rid of that taunt. Let's bring in this guy. And let's get rid of Boba. Come on, what's with the dodging? That was like four dodges in a row. That was so stupid. Get rid of the taunt. Uh, do we want to heal up Cassian or do we want to go for the kill? Let's go for the kill. All buffs. For target lock. There we go. Uh, they're both about to go, so I'm going to hold off on the disruptor again. Oh, they've got their contract. That's not good. Bring in, do we want to bring in this guy? Buff immunity and healing immunity. We like that. <laughs> Got cleansed right away. Of course it did. Uh, he's got foresight, so the big hit will miss. So we'll just do that. He's about to go which will cleanse. Darn it, the timing is just not working out. But you know what? I think my Falcon's gonna go first. So maybe we can get through him. Oh, I didn't even land it. Didn't even land it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put this on auto because time is running out. Those early dodges by the Razor Crest really hurt. And I probably should have just gone for the Shield Disruptor earlier. Alright, so I need to be quicker there. Okay, so the question is... Can I defeat the Holdo fleet with my dregs? If I go Negotiator against the Executor, Malevolence against Hux, do I have enough to get through Holdo with the remainder of my ships? Or do I do the Malevolence here? I've got the TIE Fighter. Go like that. Buzz droids. 
Buzz droids on everyone. Bring in the spy. the hyena. Uh, this is just dumb. I basically just have to wait for my ult, I think. Okay, that was my original vulture that just died. More buzz droids, more buzz droids. One more turn to my ultimate. I'm not going to be able to bring out the Ebon Hawk. Should probably have saved that big assist until after the ultimate, huh? That would have been smart. Okay, there's the ultimate. Now let's get through this guy. Yeah, right there I would have called the assist. Got him. 34, yuck. Okay, now let's hope I have enough to do the other two. He's got SLKR, so this is going to be a decent fleet. Who does the hunted go on? Okay, that's okay. Better him than Anakin. Uh, we'll just do basic. Wow, straight after Anakin. Um, all right, let's bring in Plo. Push turn meter. Big hit. Not quite big enough. Unending loyalty. Put the taunt back up. Okay. Let's get rid of this guy if we can. There we go. Um, yeah, we'll do the bombing run. Seventy two banners is not terrible. Okay, he does not have Ray, and so this fleet is not great. That's what my fleet looks like. Also, not great. Fingers are crossed here. I know Lando's, Lando's thing should be a reinforcement. Oh, dodged, of course, of course. More dodges.
More dodges. Bring in another tank. I wish I had another tank to bring in, but I was dumb and wasted him. I'm not feeling great about this. About to lose my tank. Yep. Dodges, dodges, dodges. Ah, oh, losing my falcons. I don't know which one of these is a better ship. I know this guy doesn't work very well without the uh, home one. Feel physical damage to all enemies. We like that. Oh, we lost our Falcon. That's not good. No, 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 no. All right, and I don't have another capital ship. So that's where I am stuck. Once again, ships are my downfall. Still got to question their decision to go with three fleets. You know, that would be like making you place 10 squads on defense when there are only 25 squads in the whole game. But it's worse than that. Because with squads, you can go in without a leader. With ships, you can't go in without a capital ship. So this will probably end up being a loss, but it's the first week of 3v3, and this is always very iffy trying to feel out what you're going to do, what your opponents are going to do, what are the trends going to be this 3v3, how heavy should you go on defense, how much do you need to save for offense. So I took a couple of risks on offense and they didn't pan out very well. Going bad batch against the Omicron on that Phasma squad was a bad decision. Using CLS just because I saved him for offense was a bad decision. But more than anything, it just comes down to ships. And while it's fantastic we're getting a new capital ship, the fact that the new capital ship and probably every new capital ship from here on out is going to basically be like a ship galactic legend, that doesn't have me excited. That has me extremely annoyed. I mean, I think galactic legends are the worst thing to ever happen to this game. Worse than Datacrons, even. In fact, I think Datacrons are in part a response to galactic legends. Galactic Legends have made the meta so stale over the last few years, they've been trying to shake it up with Omicrons and Datacrons. It's their way of trying to rebalance the game. So to take that dynamic and move it into the fleets, where we had a rock, paper, scissors kind of thing going on, that just, it boggles my mind. Like, why would you do that? That was dumb. So we've got three and a half hours left in the attack phase. No doubt Dante is going to wipe my board, so we'll come back in a bit and see how much I lose by. All right, so as expected, Dante did win. Let's take a look at the board. He full cleared, but he struggled a bit against my defense. In the bottom front, he dropped a battle against General Skywalker, and he dropped a battle against Darth Revan. In the back zone, he dropped a battle against Dash.
And in the top zone, he dropped two battles against Fin Fin Po. Then in the fleet zone, he dropped two battles against the Executor. But the difference is, he was able to clear my other two fleets, and I was unable to clear his Radis. So once again, a GAC came down to the fleet zone, and once again, I messed it up. So I have no one to blame for this but myself. I outplayed him in the squad zones, and just messed up the fleets again. So if I just had one more capital ship unlocked, I could have taken in the last of my ships and perhaps cleared the Radis, but I don't have the Radis unlocked because I don't have the Ebon Hawk up to seven stars yet. So that is one of my current farms, and once I get that ship up to seven stars and I get the Radis, that will give me that much more flexibility in the fleet zone. Of course, we're going to have the Profundity making its appearance soon. I expect a lot of my opponents to get the Profundity. They're going to pay for it, and I am not. And so I'm not going to get it probably for half a year, maybe a year. And that's going to make things really difficult. So the final score here was 1724 to 1941. Clearing that zone is worth 219 banners, which would have given me a win by three banners, even if I didn't get any banners for the victory. So this was mine to lose, and I lost it. So I'd like to thank Dante for the match. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you next round.